Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest. We have Afi and she, Bell today, and she is amazing. She is a speaker, a coach, and an advocate, and an author for epilepsy, and she has done wonders in the community to help people with epilepsy, and today she's here to share her story, to share what she's doing in the community for epilepsy, and different ways of coping with epilepsy to get through each day and to live your life to the fullest. So Avi, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show, and tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Well, hello, everyone. How you all feeling right now? <laughs> I just want you to recognize how that stands out. I'm trying to give all of you a high five from over here on the west side. Is I'm in LA right this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I am just honored. I love just being the epilepsy advocate. Because many of you, 95% of you all, do not know how epilepsy has been with several, several folks, such as Socrates, Julius Caesar, Prince, Flojo, Harriet Tubman, all had epilepsy just like me. So hello, hello. <laughs> we all have to get you all to see that, oh, you can relax when you can see the basic steps. And we can just get brotherly love to sign off that that's normal in America. And we are the most loving and best country. Because why is everybody else acting like they don't figure out what our signature is? when we just set the loving example. And I just love it when we just encourage each other and we just all have that wonderful party that you can go and see at Breaking the Cocoon because you play amusement, recreations, tunes, staying young, and we're just shining the positive, encouraging one there where we can just all encourage each other and shine off whatever challenge you're going through. Obviously, much better must be coming because we are way more important than that butterfly. So whatever challenge, just look at yourself breaking out the cocoon and coming into a huge, huge flourishing when you just stay positive and recognize the greater things obviously coming to you. I love it. I love it. So tell everybody a little bit about how it all started for you. You know, now your epilepsy to this day, they can't figure out it's 70% of all cases of epilepsy are unknown. They don't know why it happens. It just happens. And you fall into that category, correct? Clearly. Yeah. <laughs> now, what age did you get epilepsy? Did you develop epilepsy? Uh, oh gosh, I was, I want to say baby, but whatever, no, I was just a young teenager and it's just out of the blue, it's just clearly, so be careful, be careful about medicine because this country, as much as medicine has never worked, I even tried to stop taking medicine and your, uh, my seizures got heavier because that's just another drug. Even though they even say, oh, oh, that's the one that they all accept in the country. Medicine is just another drug. So that's why I don't have respect because all of the medicine I have taken has not helped. It has never helped me one time. And I, that's what I feel triggered it because I was only feeling deja vu when I was um, going there the, um, as a teenager. And when I was asking my parents, I'm like, what's deja vu? Am I going to be able to figure out what's going to happen next week or next year? You know, how should I work deja vu? And they're like, what? Let me take you to the doctor. And the epilepsy version was like, look at me like, oh, you're actually having a seizure, sweetie pie. Here, let me give you some of this, this um, Vimpad. Let me take you this Vimpad and let's see how that one will help you out. And as soon as I started taking that med um, Vimpad, that that's when I started getting complex partial seizures where mine is like a sleepwalk twists and turns. I'm doing a lot of turns and moves and I'm clearly unconscious, but my eyes are wide open. So I have no idea. So just accept all of us, even though you guys see these weird moves, come on. We all have the different moves there. Now, you know, it's probably been a roller coaster ride for you, you know, living with this disorder. And, you know, many people um, don't know a lot about it. So when you don't know a lot about it, you fear it. And it's a very common disorder. A lot of people have it. And I believe it was, I think it's like one out of seven people will experience a seizure in their lifetime. You know, it's seizures and epilepsy are more common than people realize. And, you know, we have a large, you know, group of people in the, in the United States alone that have, have epilepsy. And in other countries, they are, there are millions of people worldwide that have epilepsy. 
And, you know, it's, it's hard for people to cope and live a, a happy, healthy and productive life when you have to struggle with epilepsy. I'm sure there are many times you feel, feel fearful because you don't know when your next seizure is going to happen. How do you deal with that fear or that scared emotions inside of not knowing? Well, that's the whole thing is that I'm not worried about that one because I'm here. Well, I'm just very, the Holy Spirit dwells in me. And he just showed me to stop thinking about it because that's one thing I've noticed is when I just ignore, when I ignore what exactly is going to happen, um, hey, obviously something much better must be coming to me. And so that's one thing there because as much as I... Mm, I don't know if I can connect to those who understand the Holy Spirit because Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged for the Lord thy God will be with you wherever, wherever, wherever you will go. <laughs> <laughs> Memorize your scripture so fast that you make it a song. So that's literally the words of Joshua 1 9. <laughs> it is, you know, and, and and to me, it's like, you know, basically you're saying you can't focus on the past, what ha has happened. We can't change it. So we have to just focus on today, now, the moment, and just live our, our, our fullest life. And the loving people who are out there, there are so many loving people. And I keep getting happily surprised because remember, uh -huh, my BMW is way better than y'all BMW. <laughs> my BMW, bike, metro, and walking. It's keeping my body toned and beautiful. Oh, one time I missed a few times I missed the bus, and I will get the strangers. Another Asian guy rolled rolled up to me. He's like, "Oh, I see you missed it, and look at my daughter right here. I'm not at all interested. I just want to make sure we keep everybody safe. So, can I drive you to the next spot you need to go to? I will." Oh, thank you, sir. You are so loving. He just showed me how he's not hitting on me and just drove me to the next spot. <laughs> That's so nice. You know, yeah, I just see the loving folks. There are a level, a lot of loving and caring people out there. And, you know, in the epilepsy community, I, I find that I find a lot of people that they hold anger, like, why did this have to happen to me? You know, uh, they're and they're so angry and you can't live life in anger. To me, I feel like everything happens for a reason. I don't, you know, I don't think, in, you know, for me, I, I know that I would not be the person I am today if I didn't have epilepsy. I wouldn't have the empathy and the love that I have for others if I didn't go through what I went through in life. And I feel, you know, sometimes we don't understand at the moment why we have to go through all these obstacles in life. But I realized that it has made me a better person over the years. And, and, and it has made me, you know, look at people differently, feel differently. And it has given me the power to want to help others where I didn't have these things before. You know, And when I started to get into the, the worst parts of my life, I realized once I started to do things and I helped myself, I gave me the power and the appreciation to help others because in the time of need, when I was at my worst, people came out of the woodwork to help me and they didn't have to, you know, and, and for me, I felt I had to reciprocate and give that and give back to the world because so many people gave to me, you know, if we could live life like that you know, and we can help each other and not question the alternative of why is that person being so nice to me? Why should, you know, why is that person wanting to take me to the next bus stop, you know, and be more trusting and more loving and just living in the moment. You know, I think that's one of the things that we, we need to do, you know, and, you know, I feel that it's very important. Now, was there a time in your life where you felt denial? Was it hard for you to accept that you have epilepsy? Like, did you want to just put it behind you? Because there are a lot of people in, the, in this planet that feel like that, you know, if I don't think about it and I make believe I don't have it, it'll go away, you know, and they keep that, that denial mentality in their brain. You know, did you, when you realized you, and you were diagnosed with epilepsy, how did you feel? Were you, did you want to make believe like it wasn't there or were you open to figuring out, okay, I have it. I have to accept it. And I have to figure out how to live with it. How did you, what, what were the emotions and, and the things that went through with you? That was the tough. I was like, I was beating myself up for several, you know, for a couple of years when I was like, dang it, if I hadn't told them about the deja vu, I wouldn't have started taking this medicine. And I, 
I'm all like, mm, mm. <laughs> like uh. but then I was just like, okay, okay, I've got it. Let me just overcome and let me just not end. The Lord had to just get other folks. That's why I just don't ignore how we've got a whole, the community. That's why everybody's just around. And when we could just get the accepting or the positive words from somebody else, it was just showing that, mm, <clears throat> you know, all the energy and the joy that I do have when I don't think about it. It's right. when you free your mind, the rest will follow. I literally can sincerely live on joy. And yeah. I don't have to figure that part out. It's just like, oh, ignore yesterday. That's one thing I've learned is like ignore yesterday or last week that you don't like the parts that you don't like exactly. We yeah. just disregard those exact pieces and just see about today and how he is. Most people do not even recognize, realize that I have it. It's like once they learn, to, mm, that's the whole thing. You gotta still get this government in the whole place to accept. Because the Peace Corps uh, quickly accepted me. And oh, oh, sure. We're definitely, we're about to send you over there. I was literally about packing up and about to join and leave them and everything toward the end of the college years. But as soon as they found out about epilepsy, they're like, oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I didn't know you had epilepsy. And, oh, uh-uh. The other countries will not be able to handle it like we can. I'm all like, uh, uh come on, you know I'll be safe. I ain't worried about none of that. But that's why I learned to be silent about it. I don't tell companies or places very quickly about it because as soon as I, after I graduated and everything, I got back to L.A. I could not believe how much Spanish I forgot when I wasn't practicing in D.C. Because right. D.C. I was partying. <laughs> and having fun with all the chocolate folks, but Espanol knowing muy fuerte allí. So yo regresaba allí in Los Angeles. It's like, oh, so yo fui con West LA and I didn't mention a thing to anybody. And I stayed quiet and everything so nobody can see and can tell that I'm having seizures. And when they just um, sent me over there, mm -hmm, I only, I was in, um, they sent me, I did my study abroad in Spain. After I graduated, I did a study abroad in Spain with West LA Community College. Yes. And I was just there for six weeks but I didn't mention it and everything except for the um, the place that come the house that I was living at I did tell them and everything and yeah. I just had one seizure in the six weeks he made sure that my seizures got cut and everything where people didn't notice it and everything so I was just like hey you'll be safe you'll be secure in the right spot so when it's needed you know you might not have to have a seizure for a while so hey <laughs> right don't worry yeah. It's, it's, it's hard because there is a lot of stigmatism. We have, our country has gotten better, but there is a lot of stigmatism. And like I mentioned before, you know, when people don't understand things, they misjudge or they put, a, they labelize or, you know, and they immediately have an opinion and, you know, um, you know, and most of the time those opinions aren't correct, you know, and, you know, people with epilepsy are just like everybody else. They're just as smart. They're just as capable and, you know, um, the stigmatism, you know, uh, they're working on trying to make it go away, but it's still prevalent in our society. And it's a shame that so many people, you're not the only one that feels like that, is that you they feel that they have to keep it quiet because they don't want to be judged. And, you know, it's uh, and, and, and it's sad because you don't, you know, you shouldn't labelize someone for a condition they have because nobody is perfect. You know, that word doesn't exist. Everybody has something in life. And so we should really be more open to others and more accepting and more loving towards others and not put judgment on others. And I see that's what I like hearing now. It's just that I see that um, mm, it's the one there I was here hiding, maybe I still will hide to the big companies and everything. It's just that be upfront with people who you want to have a friendly relationship or you want to have a relationship with. <laughs> Because that's one thing in my book when I learned. I was I definitely want a chocolate brother who's over six feet, but they gotta be 36 to 45 for me to see who was gonna be my soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> I got the bomb um date. This other gentleman was looking like he was a cool gentleman. You know, he comes, did all the gentleman moves, was walking me with flower. He had flowers handing me, walking me to his car and everything, opening the door and was smoothly helping me get in and out, so forth. But I was thinking, oh, okay. I don't need to tell him right away. Let me just make sure he gets connected with me fast and everything. And then, you know, I'll explain later. But long, uh-uh. The Lord made sure that didn't help it. Because 
I'm on the way. We're headed over to the movies or restaurant things first. But the next thing I know, we're on the side of the freeway, not moving. I'm all like, why are we sitting here? I thought we were going to the movies. He, he's like, mm, you just now talking to me. I'm like, oh, I must have had a seizure. So I had to show him my medical ID bracelet and explain that, oh, you know, if I'm not responding to you, you know, look for this one and this is what's going on. And he's like, oh, you got epilepsy? No, no okay. Mm -hmm. He still takes me to the movies and still afterwards dropped me off and blocked my number from that point on. But I noticed the change that when I tell other guys right away before I go, we ever go out and if, um, when we first meet and talk, I quickly tell them. And all the guys are like, oh, that's no big deal. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Thanks for telling me. And it does tell how communication is vital. Yes. Because remember that you don't hide things you got. I tell people immediately. And when they can see that, oh, you got the energy and the love, it's no big deal. It's not hard. <laughs> Communication is key. And I tell people that all the time. You have to be honest. You have to be able to communicate. And those are one of the things of coping with epilepsy. Now, you know, you talk about living free with epilepsy. How do you live free with epilepsy? I was happily shy off my BMW. So the rest of the folks jump in the car over here in West LA. But all of us who are in DC and New York and are doing that, I could still do the metros with them. So that's why people don't have to notice it all the time. Yeah. And that's why I'm not worried about any of that. I'm just keeping my body toned and making sure I'm happily exhibiting that obviously greater must be coming to you because I keep getting the feeling about how I was asking for too much to make sure be careful what you ask for because i don't know if you know how much job had in the bible but i was trying to be like job so i must see what i'll be able to gain but i'm just happily nothing is bothering me because i can't even feel a seizure you guys to, to tell me that i had a seizure when i don't even know i had one because that's the whole thing so, well this past sunday when i'm um, help, waiting on my right waiting on my dad to come and pick me up another cool sister who's over there was talking with me and um, the next thing I know I'm in the car with my dad and my mom and I'm not talking I didn't even know but they're all like yeah we had to walk you back over here to the car and everything and so most of us who have epilepsy were unconscious we have unclear we have no idea about what's going on so it's just a match simply um, and very encouraging when you guys tell us what happened and it's so amazing to see that oh okay so yeah, yeah I'm still safe and I'm still Still cool and no big deal. <laughs> and I keep getting that because that's the other testimony. Because mm, all of you guys on the East Coast don't know it, but LA has that big old one now. It's called Obama Boulevard and La Cienega Boulevard, a very, very big street. It's a huge street right there. And I'm right there waiting on a ride. <laughs> one evening but it's just like oh the bus is not gonna come for 20 minutes i'm like okay mm -mm. let me just hold on let me let's just be positive and wait and the next thing i know i'm across the street at target inside of their restroom so i'm like oh what happened oh i guess i just had a seizure so i didn't even feel it coming i didn't even realize what was happening but i was waiting on my ride i had to get myself back across the street and all my stuff my purse and my water bottle is sitting right there waiting Waiting for me at the bus stop and it's just like oh my goodness I don't have to think about a thing I notice that when you free your mind the rest will pile up when I don't think about anything greater rewards come to me because when right. you think about something and always living that's what it, uh, worries are so it's cast the anxiety and burden off of you don't think about things over and over again just drop it and focus on another step and you'll see greater things I agree with that I definitely agree with that. You can't dwell on, on the negative. You have to focus on the positive and any, anything that happens to you in life, even if it's negative, you can pull something positive out of it because we learn from everything that happens in life and it really? makes us a stronger, better person. And, you know, and that's how people's mentality should be, especially when you're struggling with epilepsy. Don't, don't focus on the negative, focus on the positive, you know? I feel like epilepsy has made me a stronger person. I feel like it's given me, you know, the ability to see people in a different light. You know, it's made me empathetic. You know, you think about things like that, you know, how has it made your life better? Not how, how has it made your life worse, but what are the, what are the things that happened that made your life better? And you focus on those things. Now, did you have to go through like 
a lot of people that have <clears throat> epilepsy have self-esteem issues. They have low confidence. They don't, they don't strive. They feel stuck in life. You know, did you feel any of that? And if you did, how did you overcome it? No, I didn't feel it. I was just all, oh, I hope they didn't see. I hope they don't um, are worried about me. But it's just when I'm staying um, positive and I just connect to the people like who I want to be my friends, because especially it was a lot of it, you know, in college and everything. Yeah. And you know, when I just get all of them who were over there at Howard, they were like, oh, whatever, whatever, moving on. Anyway, <laughs> so I had to hurry up and do another, you know, focus on the other projects. So that's one thing I was having fun doing in business school. We just had all of our projects so, doing the teamwork because teamwork literally makes a dream work so i'm just focusing on the project so hey let me just do the parties <laughs> and all the folks who just party with me just like oh look at all her energy and joy and oh, they could care less because they're just all amazed that oh all of us and dang it dang it because <laughs> i wish i could show you guys the huge water bottle i literally have my my one gallon water bottle with me every day and that's <laughs> why i get to be able to go over what you guys used to call the staple center is now called the crypto <laughs> arena <laughs> and you go over to the crypto arena and they could care less about it because that's where i had the brain surgery and once i could just all of us with epilepsy we get our shortcuts we get to go into the, all those big stadiums we can go into all the big um, restaurants with all of our stuff and don't have to worry about bringing our water and bring our stuff because that's our cut that's a little bonus that we get you know with all the epilepsy that we have uh, and make sure that you don't ignore the the access paratransit Access mm -hmm. paratransit is all over this country. And we don't have to pay much to, less than Uber and Lyft. So we get to have all of our rides. So, hey, just look at all the bonuses that we gained from that one for a while. And just, you know, well, if we're going to handle this for a while, at least we get these bonuses and we don't have to worry about, you know, using lots of funds and everything. So, hey, I'm just thinking <laughs> about what else, what other nonprofit or I'm seeing all these grants things right now. So I'm going to see who's going to help me get a grant for <laughs> I have the lefty last line. I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce ones that are trying to get the good connections. Let's just see who's going to explain for me. <laughs> now, what motivated you to want to write the book, Living Free with Epilepsy? There's no, after graduating from business school at Howard University, no company, as soon as they find out about epilepsy, oh, uh, well, no, all them hesitants, like, dang it, if I had just... Mm, stay quiet and not put that one down I would have gotten the positions but after I didn't it's just like what can I do how can I get this one it's like don't ignore the easy one you know you can have force yourself to write your book and share your story and when people see the true message this true testimonies that you got they'll be more uplifted because yeah. so I wrote my book and everything and I just see how many more people are like oh wow that was an easy read and oh okay and it is is residual income right there that doesn't go away because mm -hmm, all the big big winners <laughs> uh, all the big authors like you see michelle and barack obama oh my gosh all the big books they've got and everything everybody's buying their thing all the time so i'm just trying to see about the next book for me to write but i'm um, throwing me libros in espanol y inglés que también es fácil para leer en español que viviendo libre con epilepsia es importante que yo vivo con mi epilepsia y todos los latinos aquí en los ángeles so es fácil it's by seeing Los Angeles. <laughs> LA folks do it. At least I've got the librarians are all deciding about, you know, if they how many books are available, be able to purchase my one so they can, can, can check it out in the LA library. So I'm just like, Lord, let me see. Let me see who else I can connect with and just and motivate them to see. I love it. I love it. And where can people find your book? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, the easy one there. Um, they can go to my website, Breaking the Cocoon. Breaking the Cocoon. Should I put it on chat? Because mm -hmm. Breaking the Cocoon, they can get it there, of course, at Amazon. You can also get it at Amazon. And you can see them in both ways on how to get it. Just trying to see the other spots. So, yeah, but this is mm -hmm. 
you'll just see the smooth vibe and the um, smooth um, information that people can just gain as they get it because more people are um, uplifted when they see the true stories because that's why you'll have the story of Prince, of Harriet Tubman and the Julius Caesar, all them having epilepsy just like me. As many people don't see how, oh, okay, those famous people because Prince had his since he was a baby just yeah. like Socrates. And um, Julius Caesar had theirs when they were babies, and they mm -mm, didn't let that one bother them. Like, right. whatever, whatever, obviously. It just be for a while, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously we're obviously breaking out that cocoon like the butterfly and that's what I live on because just like I got mine in teenage years and they said that the reason I got mine is that it was radiation too much radiation in my brain as my family had me get my my thyroid was burning it was getting burned out when I was younger oh, and they wow. didn't want to have a big scar on my 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 all oh, with your neck right here so they actually had the radiation and that's why my family quit using the microwaves because they're like look at that all the radiation in your in the brain brought that one on I'm the first person on both sides of the family nobody else has ever had this before and so that's why the whole family was like what what is going on so I stopped using microwave and that <laughs> well we have to you know people don't realize that there's a lot of radiation in the phones in the microwave and you know you go your list goes on and you have to be careful you know I had a I had a writer that wrote for me and she's a doctor and she passed away several years ago and she, she got lung cancer. She never smoked a cigarette in her life, but she swore that she, she felt that the, the, all the radiation between the cell phones, between standing in front of the microwave, between all these little things that we don't realize give out radiation. She had no proof, but she, she swore that, you know, all these things, you know, contributed to her cancer. And, you know, you have to be careful. You, you know, you never know. And in life, I, it's, you know, try to be your healthiest, do the best you can. And that's all we can do, you know, but, you know, it's just trying to be healthy and trying to be, and just learn how to be happy and just live a productive life and be the best we can be. And that's what it all comes down to. Now, if you wanted to tell people, like, if you look at everything that you've talked about today, what are some things you really want to emphasize to the public, to the PR listeners, and you want people to understand? That feel good when you're going through a challenge that obviously something much greater must be coming to you. <laughs> much greater because you're going through that one so obviously something much better must be coming and so hey when you free your mind I live on that when you just free your mind and ignore you just keep proclaiming that okay okay well, something much better must be coming and yes let me just be submissive is what the Lord has been teaching me is to stop figuring out the exact step the exact way let me just be submissive and just build the loving relationships with more people and let me just see what door what door will hope it open up for me one day but yeah. i'm just doing what i love and just encouraging because you guys come on let's get brotherly love to become the signature of america because brotherly love is all over there in philly if you all know about doing the brotherly love moves you know about the west south the deep south in the west Louisiana, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, all of them have the hospitality, brotherly love. It's like, come on, why isn't all of America signing up? So all of us want to feel the acceptance that, oh, you're not worried about uh, us working with you or having a nice you know, time or relationship, who knows? You shine off that the acceptance is alive. And when people can see that, oh, acceptance is really alive in this country, get a high five or thumbs up, fist bump, the five people you do not know. And oh, Americans are loving. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you see how that will stand out now as everybody becoming robots off of their phone. <laughs> I'm like they're afraid to say hello now to a new person living yeah. on the phone all day. Y'all, hi. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> just shine off the acceptance for all of us with any health challenges and obviously greater must be coming because mm -hmm, you see all those famous people you were accepting that you saw her like you telling you and prince flojo harriet tubman danny glover oh, even yeah socrates they all had it yes and they didn't let it bother them we know their name so who cares greater is coming and you're just going to see that we're all loving and the more that you shine love and acceptance around the uplifting body 
because that positive vibe brings yes. lots of energy and joy. And people are like, okay, it's not so hard. We can handle it. <laughs> I agree with you. I, you know, I truly think that people have to just learn how to accept themselves and people on the outside world need to accept us. And, you know, you can't discriminate because someone has an illness. You don't discriminate because someone has diabetes. You don't discriminate because someone had a heart attack. You yeah. don't discriminate because someone has heart disease or high cholesterol. So we shouldn't discriminate people because they have epilepsy. You know, right. there's it's no not reason. Ours. We were babies and it's not our fault. There's nothing that triggered because they don't have any trigger for mine. They can't figure out anything about why or exactly when mine happened because there's no triggers off of mine. So, no. You know, <laughs> and someone that has heart disease in their family is more susceptible to a heart attack, but they don't get discriminated. Someone that has high cholesterol could have a stroke, but they don't get discriminated. Mm -hmm. So you could go on and on and on the what if, the what if, what if, you know. So people with epilepsy should not be discriminated. We should be loved and accepted accepted and we should look at the beauty within themselves and we people should recognize their strengths their intelligence that what they're capable of doing what they're capable of giving back to society and respect that honor that and love that person for who they are and not for the label of what they have as a condition because everybody has something in this life whether it's stress anxiety depression you can go the list goes on and on and on we don't discriminate you know, and everybody is beautiful. We all have our strengths and we all need to learn to accept each other for who they are and not judge people because the people who like to judge others are the ones that usually have the most problems within. So mm. we need to really focus on, you know, just accepting everyone and learn to love and learn to be oh. our best person possible. Because you see that old school thing when I was a girl, when I was growing up the baby, the old school way. Yeah, because you know we always heard when we grew up, reach yeah. out and touch somebody's <laughs> hand. You make this world a better place as you can. It's just like, oh, the whole world will be feeling much better when we all exhibit that. Okay, it's no big deal. I was just going to do my loving moves and, and make sure we encourage. And you see all y'all who love the pets, the dogs and the cat lovers and everything. You see how you run up to all the other ones. Why can't you run up to a human being and give all of us the same encouragement? And it was just up with the in energy and vibe. And yes. People could just see how we could just stay high in the spirit. We don't have to figure anything out because I just stay high every day. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now tell everybody your website again so they know where to go. Breaking the cocoon. When you go breaking the cocoon.com, you'll go over there and you'll see how we can all party. If you want to party with me over here, you can also get the book. We can just design off the loving spot to move <clears throat> where I can also go and meet you and share more and more of the testimonies that we have for the real people. So there's just several different angles over there for all of us to connect and we can just do the Bible study moves as well there. So we can just all shine off the truth true testimony because people are more uplifted when they can see the reality and so I've had so many things so many seizures and I've stayed safe all these times that's why I'm not worried about it and I just <laughs> clearly do that because communication is the vital one because I'm it saying is. I've had it on the planes and uh -huh, make sure you tell the airplane person right away the flights because <laughs> they get more afraid if they didn't hear about it beforehand so make sure communication is vital is there there and you'll just be able to see more of the details on breaking the cocoon and you see that well now my youtube channel living free with epilepsy that's how you see it right here at youtube and you'll see the reality of how many seizures you'll see the seizure i've actually had and what they look like right there so that's where all the communication is much stronger and you have all the party moves right there i love it and you do you also do speaking events too so you speak when people want uh, need speakers, you can speak on epilepsy and you can speak on oh, open about well, epilepsy. I'm an epilepsy advocate, right, exactly, for those who want to be get encouragement, we can get more of the companies to see that this is what's going on. They can see those famous people and they can get more of the testimonies. And so, yeah, they could just um, exhibit me right there at Breaking the Coon. So, I, I'm an epilepsy advocate with many of the other tools and everything. And many people can see about the steps to the to say. Yes, for safe. You keep it in time because any seizure five minutes and under is not an emergency. So don't call 911. As I have seven to 13 a month, we do not need to get over there and have to, uh, we're not trying to pay all that money, okay? So just, <laughs> 
you can pay and make sure the area is safe. You're looking at the time, you can pay and encourage, you're going to encourage us because we're unconscious. You know, we have no idea what's going on, but just try to encourage and ask detailed questions. And P, you know, you're paying attention to what's going on because we don't know what's happening. So just kind of keep records of the things that happen. And then as a share, you share exactly when we get back to our consciousness, you'll share what happened so that we could just keep the records and we have that seizure diary, we send it over to our epitologist. So we have the understanding right there. So just share those all the details and you'll see how it's a great one there and the positive moves happen when we all encourage each other at breaking the cocoon i love it oh my god afi this has been wonderful i thank you so much for coming on the show you have shared so much valuable information your motivation your inspiration your love and your care is, is, is so special and i i really I, I I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have somebody like you who is trying to make a change in this world for the better. And we need more people like you in the epilepsy community who could actually speak and make changes and make people see things at, at a higher level. And, you know, so I thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And it means a lot to me. So thank you. I thank you, Stacey. Come on, you understand and you know how to relate. I mean, I just wish, because you know how they'll listen to you much faster, especially in New York. <laughs> that brotherly love. We can all, oh, we are accepted. Okay, that is normal. We can make the change because Generation Z is getting a bad example that you can only be living on your phone. You can only be on your computers. Yeah, we're human beings. And let's just shine off that all the humans are loving yes. people and they'll listen exactly. to you so much faster. So remember five people a day that they don't know, get a high five of five people and that, oh, we are loving you positive. I like it. Yes, I'm sending my hugs to you. <laughs> well, keep your loving heart. You stand out and shine. So I'll see you all the moves the right night, the right moves to make with you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Look forward to look forward to learning more with you. As if I'm going to do the Congressional Black Caucus in September. So I want to your tips on how to get the Congress folks to actually <laughs> follow through with making these steps of action where they can have five minutes of the positive news on the news. The news I only want to show you negative stuff. Can we do five minutes of the loving things that happen? All of our testimonies can encourage more people on the news if the, the news will actually show the positive things for five minutes. What's the big deal? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. In reality. I really do want to learn that from you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on this show and you will make a change. You are making a change. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Stacey. You just keep your loving heart and continually. We're all a fan. Teamwork literally makes a dream work because I live yes. on that one. So come on, let's get the whole team to find out. Oh, okay. We are loving. And the more of us, when we go to the party, they're not dancing until the first five of us start dancing. So all we got to do is shine off the loving examples to get more folks to start high-fiving and dancing joy with us every day. Yes. A hundred percent. Thank you so much, Amphi. This has been great. I love having you on and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I look forward. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>